Lossi, president of Neptune Global, back on the show to give us an update on the precious metal world. Chris, so nice to have you back on the show again. Thank you, Vaz. It's great to be here. Well, especially since a lot has changed since we last spoke, I'd say one of the biggest stories is the trade tensions that we're facing with some of our trading partners, which has involved precious metals and metals. So yes. how is this affected? So that's a great point. We have, we're seeing change in the world macroeconomically, geopolitically, that are challenging old alliances and agreements, whether it's NAFTA or the European Union which is something that was not expected or would have been considered inconceivable just a few years ago. So what's really interesting, so many of these things are what we call man-made or created, right, NAFTA, these agreements, and things change, right? There's probably going to be somewhat of a recalibration of things or reorder of things. And where precious metals come into that, precious metals historically are a fixed, you know, a thing of value, like say, talk about gold, so that when things like currencies, which will inevitably be affected by the changes going on, whether it's massive devaluation or whatever, you know, gold is a store of wealth through times like this. So even though the gold price has been kind of trading sideways for the lit, for really the beginning of this year, you know, it's really setting up for a pretty uh, great future, and robust future, because it thrives in times of turmoil and change. And something else that affects that is uh, rising interest rates, inflation, which we do have stricter monetary conditions now since we last spoke. Yes. So how much of an impact does that have? Well, it's, right now we see the dollar kind of rallying. So gold has been tempered in price. But over time, you know, with the rising inflation, with, you know, people are saying with the yield curve is telling us we're going into a recession again, which will mean we're probably going to end up with chopping the rates we are now raising right now. You know, gold is really positioned, right, maybe not tomorrow or in the next two, three weeks, but to start resuming its next leg upward. And that creates a lot of volatility in the precious metals market. And you invented the PMC ounce to kind of avoid that. So how is this a different instrument than what's available already? Sure. From a structural perspective, it's a way to easily trade precious metals in real time, but actually own physical metals behind the scenes. But what it is, it's also weighted and diversified. It's truly a turnkey physical precious metals portfolio consisting of the four precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, palladium within each PMC ounce. So really it's empowered investors to be able to buy and sell a a, a, a diversified position in the precious metals market. And that diversification, which is logically weighted before, between the four metals, kind of mitigates the volatility that you get if you're in just one or two of the metals. And as we spoke in the past, silver is the great example. Um, even in last Friday's big hit to the precious metals market, who suffered the most? Silver. Um, it is always the most volatile, whether it's to the upside or the down. There's plenty of silver in the PMC out. So when silver takes off, PMC ounce holders are going to benefit, but those positions also in platinum and palladium, again, mitigate that volatility. And it's performed the way it's designed to do for the 10 years it's been in existence. So what are the opportunities that are available in the current counterparts in the PMC ounce? And where do you see gold and silver moving on in the next six months? Sure. So what's interesting is the, the story behind each metal is a little bit different. You know, people think maybe the precious metals move in lockstep and they don't, right? Gold is a monetary metal, so it's always going to be about interest rates, the dollar. You know, silver is that quasi-monetary and industrial. And silver is really, in the last um, several years, there's a supply-demand imbalance. There's not enough uh, silver coming out of the mines or being gotten through scrap to meet uh, the demand for it in the industrial sector. So at some point, that imbalance is going to have to force the price of silver up. Um, and then you have platinum and palladium, which have their own unique dynamics, right? They're industrial metals, but they're also from only a handful of countries. So it makes a lot of risk as far as their availability. And those countries are, we'll call it, not the most stable or our greatest allies. And then that's like Russia, South Africa. Sure. So. It, it's very cool to have that blend and to hear that they have their, their own little characters. Now, I just found out that the PMC ounce has been uh, available through authorized dealers. That sounds amazing. So what does that mean for customers? Well, this is, this is a big step for the company. So the product is being so well received. We are now not, the customers um, can not only just buy through us, but we are uh, bringing on a number of dealers now who are authorized buyers and sellers uh, and traders for their clients. So really it's making the PMC ounce available to more and more clients through a wider distribution of the product. 
So that we're quite excited about this, and we think it's a testimony to you know the, what the PMC House does for investors, and uh, you know we're quite excited. Oh, I think our viewers are excited too because it sounds like the PMC House would make all of our investment portfolios less dull. <laughs> <laughs> well, we think so. Uh, well, thank you so much, Chris. Nice to have you on again. Can't wait to talk to you next time to see what could change in this market. Thank you, Boz.